Welcome to another episode of Monday Night Muscle with the voice of professional bodybuilding, Bob Chicarillo. We are joined by way of Florida with the 1990 NPC overall national champion, Al Q Gurley. Al Q, welcome to the show. What's up, fellas? I, I, I need you to correct me. I, I normally don't make mistakes and I'm never wrong, no, as Bob never, knows. Never. It was 1990, right? It was 1990 you won 1990. that? Yeah, man. Your memory is still intact. That's that's a good sign. Yeah, well, I remember Kevin Lavroni won it in 91. That's right. And my old training right. partner, Troy Zuccolato, won it in 1989. And then right. here you came, and when you came on and onto the scene, a lot of people were saying it's the next Sean Ray. We kind of had a little box cut and yeah, yeah, a little the- high yellow looking guy. I'm like, who's this guy? What the heck's well, going on? One of you still got hair, so that's good. But uh, LQ, I remember you uh, from our... I'm heading back red. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. But, uh, I remember you from our amateur days because uh, while, while uh, Sean had... Has gone on his married way in, the, in 87. Uh, yes. I was still kicking around in 89, 90, 91. So uh, I remember you coming on to the scene. Fantastic, complete physique. If I'm not mistaken, was it not Lonnie Teeper? It was Peter, I think it was Peter McGaugh. No, you're right. It was no, Lonnie. I think it was Lonnie I Teeper remember. That, I know what, exactly what he's going to say. That put out the, is, <laughs> is LQ Gurley the greatest that, amateur of all time? Oh, my God. No. Now, did that put the undue amount of pressure on you at that, that point? sounded like a lot of pressure. I mean, honestly, no, because anytime somebody bestows something out on like that on you, it's their thought process. It's what they're saying. It's 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 part of the hype. But I've always been the type of guy who's been been very realistic and humble. And I knew that I was coming behind some serious names: the Sean Rays, the Vince Taylors, um, all the guys who are already out there, Lee Haney, Lee Lebrada, all those guys. And to say that the greatest of all time, I'm like, oh dude. No. Well, I'll tell you when I read it. When I read it, I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> I tell you what, though, it, it, it did spur some emotion. I mean, that that got yeah, that, that, that got the head. Of, people were looking. They're like, hey, who is this guy? Real quick, they went, yeah. But I wanted to find out who you were because I don't think I was there when you actually won that. And of course, you won the eighth one because Haney. I, I like to give Bob the lesson. Here we In 1982, go. it was Lee Haney. 1983, right. it was Bob Paris. 1984, right. it was Mike Christian. 1985 right. was Phil Williams. 86 was Gary Stridham. 87 was moi. And 88 right. was Vince Taylor, 89 was Troy Zuccolato, and you were 1990, followed by Kevin Lavrano. Now, wait a minute. 1990 Nationals, if I'm not mistaken. That, was that the drug-tested year? That was the infamous drug-tested year. So Wait a minute. I didn't I even was, know this. I was in that show. What? As a light heavyweight, and I took fifth. So we were in the, you were a light heavy, correct? Yeah. So How he, did he, he beat pass me in, a drug test? What? Well, that's why I was in the light heavy. Now, mind you, this is Instead the of the heavyweights. This is the infamous, let's let's take it back, Al Q, because you had to have been paying attention unless you were living under a rock. You were a bodybuilder in the nineties. <laughs> yeah. Nineteen ninety was the big drug tested year for the Arnold Classic, which of course I won and failed in nineteen ninety, March of nineteen ninety. And this was the movement. I mean, there was a, a moratorium out on steroid testing pretty much. And this right. was the first time right. they ever tested the Mr. Olympia which also took place before you became a national champion, right. which I passed the test. And I got third place in 1990. Uh, and of course, Lee Haney won his seventh Olympia and then came the nationals. So somewhere along the way, <laughs> right, right. I, I, I totally missed it because I don't think I attended that nationals. I didn't know that it went down into the amateur ranks that year. I only knew oh, about and the it was in LA. And yeah. it was in LA, you're right. I'm That's like, what right. the hell? So That's- I must have been making an appearance somewhere, enjoying somewhere. my third place. Olympia uh, finish, but I've never got to experience that. But I got third in 90, and I probably went on a world well, tour. And you won the nationals, yeah. and you passed the test. Did you go on to the world championships after that? Yes, I did. Which most bodybuilders didn't do. How did it go for you? I won. Holy crap. Guess wow. it won good. Yeah, I mean, but do you remember, uh, uh, my memory isn't as good as Sean's, but uh, who else was in the uh, top five in the light heavies? And, uh, oh, do you remember? Yeah. Wow. Because we were in the same class. I didn't even realize it until just now. But yeah. I was just over the edge into the heavies at that point. It was still early in my career. Right. So clean, which I was. I was, was, was not that whole team was a blur. Yeah. I don't remember the names. I mean, I should be shot. I should have done my research before this. But, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I'll come up with it after the, we'll look it up after in our commercial break, but uh, I'll be curious to see some names in there, Sean, because they're going to be names, of course, we all recognize and know, right. but, but LQ burst onto the scene. So after the big headline, uh, and now you feel like you've got to, you've got to fill this prophecy, uh, bring me into the first year of your pro uh, debut. 91. How did 91 look? I sat out. 
You sat out because I, sat, I sat out because one, I needed to make a lot of improvements because with the drug tested year, mm -hmm. there were a lot of things that you weren't able to do. Sure. So right. I had to, you know, retool, size up, and be able to stand in when it came time to stand with the pros. You know, my rookie year, I sat it out, and a lot of people. Were kind of pissed off with me about that, including but. Lonnie Teeper. Yeah, Lonnie Teeper was. <laughs> he expected big things. He yeah, he, he, he expected, of champions. Yeah, he's got jumped there, man. You know. Yeah. And then you know, I came out in, uh, I believe it was '92 with the Ironman Pro, and I placed third to uh, Robbie Robinson and Vince Taylor. Wow, no, that's a good company. <laughs> yeah, that's a real so good company. Yeah, that was uh, that was my introduction, and I felt okay. Uh, I belong. But were you living in Florida at the time? No, I was still in Philly. Okay, so both trips, you came out to the West Coast to do this, where no one knew yeah. who the hell you were. You win the Nationals, and you placed third on two West Coast competitions. I believe it was 92 also that we went on tour in Germany. Was that 92? You came that out was there? 92. Me, you, yep. and uh, uh, Vince Taylor, and, and Groove and Ruben, I think we're all out there. Kevin Leverone, yeah. uh, Porter Cottrell. Was that the first time you left the country? Was that, that was a great time. Was that the yeah. first time you left the country as a bodybuilder? Actually, the second time because the, I left the country on the um, the universe or the world games. Okay. Well, what we're talking about, Bob, back in those days, we, you know, they had the FIBO over in Germany, yeah, but sure. they also had these little tours that we could go into, like nightclubs, and you pose like at a nightclub, oh, wow. like they stop the music. You and, and I were on one in Germany, huh? You and I were yes. on one in Germany. Yeah, we Jimmy, did that. Jimmy, Vince Taylor, and Flex. Yeah, I think those clubs were called the Chippendales thing. So it I don't know what like you, it, right? I don't know what you guys were doing to make money on the side, but it sounds more profitable. It seemed like we had a great time. That was a great day. I mean, it was crazy because you had to drive to all these different places. But over in Europe, they would like literally sure. go to a discotheque, right. yeah. stop the music, and we'd come out there and do our little bodybuilding <laughs> stuff. Kind of cool. Yeah, on the on the. Uh, the port was it the uh the posters they had us as the body god yeah man oh wow, the body god look at the yeah, check this out so your <laughs> reputation feeds you well, you had a very short pro career i might add you, you unceremoniously kind of disappeared off the landscape or or i was too busy to notice when that happened so where when did that happen for you uh walking away in 97 I got injured. I had a catastrophic injury, blew out both knees, had oh. patellar tendons uh, ruptured. How? So with that, that pretty much put the brakes on everything. I mean, even my surgeon was telling me at the time, wow. he said, look, you can compete again, but we can't guarantee the repair. How, did, said, you How did you do that? Yeah. yeah. What happened? I was, I was at the uh, Spectrum leaving a Sixers game, and there was a freak slip and fall. Wow, really? And this was literally a couple weeks before the my other, uh, not my pro debut, but my New York uh, pro debut okay. at the uh, Night of Champions. Sure. So which I thought I was poised to win it because at that point I had sized up, everything was on point, we were ready to go. Now this is what year, LQ? 1997. 97, okay. Yeah. So he's owned the Spectrum ever. He's been a percentage owner of the Spectrum ever since. And let me tell you, those those night <laughs> of the champion years in there, yeah, were there, there'd be forty or fifty guys competing in them. So they were huge, right? Uh, back at that yeah. point. But uh, we we got to get into uh, uh, where you go from that point and and your thoughts on on such an unceremonious ending to your career. Uh, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Al Q, back in just a moment. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. All right, we're back with one of the greats from the old days, Sean, L Cube Gurley. Good to catch up with the LQ. And before the break, we got into uh, uh, tearing both quads. Uh, you know, an interesting, Sean, because every bodybuilder you talk to, yeah. almost nobody hurts themselves in the gym. 
it's always some oddball freak thing away from the gym, shoveling snow, falling down stairs. Uh, you know, LQ was was at a basketball game. So, yeah. uh, what happens after that, LQ? You're poised and ready to go in the, the night of the champions, as it was back then. Huge prestigious show, prime of your career, and boom, this happens to you. At that point. As far as I was as concerned, uh, bodybuilding went out the window. Uh, I was horrified, terrified. I was wondering if I was going to walk again. Yeah, right. And I was fortunate to get one of the top surgeons in uh, Philly at the time to do the repair. And he told me not to worry. Look, we'll, we'll bring you back prior to pre-injury condition. And, you know, true to his word, he did. Uh, the repair has lasted to this day. However, at the time, uh, this is 1997, this was breakthrough uh, state-of-the-art technology. Mm -hmm. So their thinking was, you know, yo, just back off, take it easy. Don't worry about the competitions anymore. Just think about walking. Wow. So it came down to the you know, competition, walking, walking, mm -hmm. competition, walking. <laughs> so it, it begs the question though, you, with that, in, that information, did you ever try to go back and squat again? I did. Wow, that takes guts. I did. Uh, matter of fact, the injury took place in April. I was back in the gym in August. Uh, I had full leg um, Bledsoe braces. Wow, you sound like April. Ronnie Coleman, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, the mentality. What, what? So, did he tell you not to squat, and you chose to squat anyways as a way of speeding up your recovery? They told me to take it easy and don't do anything. But I was the other. The other uh, advantage I had. I had a young uh, intern who was the uh, the chief surgeon's uh, assistant. Okay. So he came into the gym and he wanted to see what I was doing because right. they were they were really amazed at how quickly I was recovering and even to uh, be able to maintain the muscle mass. So he watched me squat on a Smith machine. Okay. And from that point on, I was doing squats on Smith machine. He was doing leg extensions, on, you know, everything that I had done prior to the injury. And at that point, I was rolling the dice because I said, well, if they can repair me to pre-injury status, well, let's see if, what this can do. So you came back. I did come back, 99, but again, with the in, with the uh, injury itself and then the atrophy of the muscle, because you're not able to train to the full extent right. sure. within that short period of time, um, I literally came back just over a year. Where did you and come back at, Where, 1999? Where? Came back in San Fran to San Francisco. Probably. Okay, that's the one Chris Cremier won, I believe. Yeah, and I was... Uh, basically a shadow of myself my whole motivation was fear and just to be able to get myself you know back to a uh, a serviceable level okay how'd you do where'd you place i came in like 10th or 11th so was that part of the process that i just want to get on a pro stage or was that the nail in the coffin and i'm done i can't do it anymore uh, I wanted to get back on the stage because I felt that I could compete, but when I saw how much the uh, quad tissue had atrophied, at that point the handwriting was on the wall and it was just time to, you know, pretty much let it go. Was that the last show for you? That was... Mm, <laughs> it never is. Yeah. <laughs> Two years later. Hang on, there's more. Take us back. I, I, I pretty much, you know, kind of erased all of that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It was a very bittersweet pill. Because yeah. at that point, at 97, I was on the on the ascent. Yeah. I had made the adjustment that, you know, sized up. And when that happened, uh, as my surgeon told me, he said, look, we can't guarantee you. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be able to walk and, you know, function prior to injury, if you keep this up. So at that point, I just pretty much had to let the whole thing go. And I walked away, you know, just com completely walked away from it clean. Well, this is um, this is always where it gets interesting for, for pro bodybuilders. Yeah. You dedicate your life. Uh, for some of us, it, it takes longer to get there. Right. Uh, in the span of your entire career, LQ, I hadn't even turned pro yet. I wouldn't turn pro until 2000. So you were actually coming gone. I was still hammering away. Mm -hmm. um, but your career came to an abrupt end, not, not by your choosing. Uh, at least you got back on stage and kind of wrote yourself out to say, okay, at least I'm not just out on my, on my back, you know what I mean, so to say. You went out on the stage. 
What happens mm. at that point, though? Uh, at that point now, you got a, a whole different path that you're going to take. Yeah. Uh, which path did you take at that point? Was it business? Was it learning a new trade? Was it uh, going back to school? Where did you go? I was fortunate to run into a couple of guys, and I went off into business, uh, business development companies, and I basically went on that path. Mm -hmm. Stayed away from the competition arena completely because uh, I had this little thing when, when I was competing. I said, yo, I'm not going to the show unless I'm in it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was only certain guys back then. Sean was one of them. Kevin, obviously. Uh, the crew pretty much that I competed against and came up with, I was really only interested in seeing them. And that's nothing against all the youngins who were coming up. Right, right. sure. But um, once you're out of that mix and you're no longer in the circle, you literally have to readjust your whole mindset, your whole mentality to uh, looking forward. So bodybuilding at that point was in the rear view mirror and it was just a complete total mindset adjustment and change. Yeah, it's interesting, along the lines, I do Where Are They Now? And I did one with JJ Marsh. And he happened to be in like the, the 91, uh, 1991 Ironman yep. competitions, a former USA champion. And when he walked away, I mean, like he never looked back. Like he didn't even go to a bodybuilding mm -hmm. show. You find that more often with females too. Yeah. When they're done, that's it. They just go on to the next phase of life. But in bodybuilding, some people, you know, keep one foot in this arena and one foot in the, in the real world. And it's a delicate balance because they need to have sure. um, this connection with not only the sport, but also their friends. Like Branch Warren was saying earlier, he came back and started training hard because his training partner and friend, Johnny, uh, Johnny Jackson, Jackson, Jackson yeah. wanted to come back. Mm -hmm. you, you kept your eye on a few people that you were curiously interested in, but you didn't attend the shows because there wasn't that warm, fuzzy feeling. <laughs> um, what did you supplement that with? Because I, I, I imagine like a lot of actors and, and rock and roll star, one hit wonder type people, when it comes to an abrupt end and they don't have it, some turn to alcohol, some turn to yeah. drugs. Some uh, people get <laughs> no, some people get lost. Remember Gary Coleman from the Facts of Life? I mean, he was he, he like totally lost it. And he was like, you know, beating up girls at the mall yeah, down here yeah, in Culver City. Them, yeah. Oh man, uh, I was fortunate always to be around a bunch of grounded people, you know, coming up. And you know, I went back to Philly for a while, and I stayed amongst my closest friends, the guys who I grew up with. Yeah. And they basically got me back on track because they knew that I was hurting and they knew that, um, you know, hey, the thing that I had put so much time and energy into, it's no longer there. So they're like, yo, man, bodybuilding is something that you did. Mm -hmm. It's not who you are. Yeah. And I always had that, that good word and that good advice in my ear and a good, strong network of friends around me. And they basically uh, supported me in a way that you can do other things. You're more than just that. Mm -hmm. So use your mind, whatever you put your mind to, you're capable of doing. Just do that, get yourself back up and keep it moving. And again, I've never had a, an addictive personality or anything like that. I've always maintained a very balanced, uh, humble perspective on everything. Well, what brought and, you to bodybuilding? Yeah. What, I mean, because it, once you're in it, it's an addiction, right? So how did you get into bodybuilding? I came from football. Bob, you came from, you were like 13 or 14 yeah, years old. Yeah, I was so young. I was just you know, youth sports. This guy's out in Philly with Dr. J. How did you wind up in bodybuilding? <laughs> right. Track. I mean, I was running track in okay. high school. So I ran, you know, the uh, 200 meters and the uh, 400 meter hurdles. At that time, it was, you know, the intermediate hurdles. Yeah. And... Um, I got into weightlifting and bodybuilding by way of a, a friend who's like, yo, man, you should use weightlifting in the off season to get your body strength up and just make you a better athlete. Mm -hmm. And being, I did that in my junior year, in my senior year, qualified for the track team on the first day. I'm like, hey, there's something to this. Mm -hmm. And then with the training, continued to train throughout the season and became a public league all-star the whole nine yards. So it was, uh, you know, it was, the, it was the foundation and a start. And I realized that to get stronger, to get better, to, you know, develop that body and to overall develop that look, it, it was bodybuilding. Now, LQ, after you, um, uh, you know, were out of bodybuilding you know, competition and then you, you know, started into the business arena, 
Um, did you have any interest in bodybuilding and pro bodybuilding at all? Did you see any of the Olympias, or did you, you know, did you follow the Ronnie Coleman train for the next eight years, or uh, where, where were you for? I went of- to, to uh, Ronnie's show when he competed in New York. Yeah. I believe it was Madison Square Garden against Flex. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I was in the audience. I was there. How yeah, cute, yeah. by the way. Thanks. He was hanging. Sean was hanging around there. Yeah. <laughs> I was hanging. I was part of the show. I was in it. <laughs> Wait, you, you were in it? I had a front row seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Ronnie remember, and Flex show. I love it. <laughs> I remember um, they kept calling out Ronnie and Flex. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. And as the show went on, as, as, the, as the comparisons went on, Ronnie was gradually getting better. He was starting to drop water. He got sharper and and Flex was starting to fade. Mm -hmm. And even though Flex had the quote unquote prettier physique, the the, uh, more more aesthetic, more symmetrical physique, Ronnie's overall size and shape just took over. And that was, you know, I'm like, wow. Yeah. If you remember the the story now, now Dorian uh, retires. It's pretty right. much. I mean, the whole world thinks it's Flex's show for because the, like, Flex won the Arnold Classic. Yeah, he yeah. wins the Arnold right. again, right? Yeah, he's years. he's gonna he's the uncrowned Olympia. Nobody's gonna beat. Flex. It was Flex's show. Did you see Ronnie coming any from anywhere? Like, I mean, few people actually. Yeah, saw him. he came. He came out of the blue. Yeah. He came out of the blue. I mean, I right. remember <laughs> he was starting to size up. Yeah, and he, he kept gradually, progressively getting bigger. And I'm like, yo, what the heck? <laughs> Right, yeah, you're like, like, who's this guy? You know, I tell you, who didn't see him coming, Flex Wheeler. I remember being on tour with him in Hong Kong, and we were virtually the same size. Wow, yeah, that's a big, big difference there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You're like, yo, and and you know, then you start hearing all the stories and all the rumors and this, that, and the other. What's going on, and who's doing what? And it just got to the point where I'm like, wow, I. I no, I'm I'm not going to be able to keep up with this or even you know be in that arena in that realm. Because no, nobody could. <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm a small frame guy. I mean, I've got small bones, and if you only put you can only put so much size on a frame, and it gets to the point where like you know I'm not trying to kill myself. And my mom my mom used to always tell me she's like, look, moderation is the key. You, by the time you get to your 40s and your 50s, you don't want to be in a cane. You don't want to be in a wheelchair. You don't want to be all broken down. And those words always stuck with me. Absolutely. So uh-huh. moderation is the key. Balance. You know, hey, you've got to work within your framework. And once you start to go outside of that, you know, you can make, you can, you can make the comparison to a, 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 a race car. Once you you have a specific a particular frame, you can only put so much horsepower, so much uh, uh, torque, and everything into it. After that, you start to tear this thing apart, and the car and the car will literally tear itself apart. Absolutely, and are, that's the, what happens to a human body. So, words of wisdom. We're going to take a commercial <laughs> break here, Bob, and we're going to find out uh, what bodybuilding did for you as a person. Because beyond the injury, there were some flashes of success and also some worldly travel in there. I want to find out where the best places bodybuilding took you right after this commercial break. Joe Weider's Olympia here in Orlando, Florida. A little bit strange coming out of Las Vegas for all of those years. Good evening and welcome to the event that nearly never happened. There's been an absence of a particular group of people on this stage that are back tonight. Tonight I'm here to say, welcome back to Miss Olympia.
All right, guys, we are talking to the former national champion of 1990, Bob, NPC overall winner, Al Q. Gurley, also the world champion, which I learned today. That was a contest yep. that kind of, it was very synonymous with winning the nationals, and then it wasn't. It wasn't like a big thing. You went on to do that. I remember Mike Christian also yeah. went on to, yeah, to win yeah, the A lot of great champions. Bob but Paris. I have done my due diligence, speaking of the 1990 national championship. Yes. So, L. Q. In L.A. In when the world was when the universe became the world game. That's okay, right. That's right. right. So... 1990 national championships in the NPC. I'm going to start with the heavyweights. Uh, just a few names here because you'll recognize a few. Heavyweight winner was Jerry Rogers. We all remember San Jerry. Diego. With the, Jerry, Jerry had the Jerry Rogers. curls, if you yeah, remember, six right? Six foot one or two. Oh, God. Edgar <laughs> Fletcher in second. The guy, one of our best that never won. Third place in the heavyweights yep. that year. Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman. Wow. How about that? Yeah, buddy. Now, light heavyweights. LQ Gurley. Daryl Stafford in third, Darryl. Darryl John second. Sherman in fourth, the tank, myself wow. in fifth. Wow! And then you get into some people we didn't. I don't yeah, really. John uh, Sherman won the Nationals. I believe it was like ninety. So how about how about that for a who's who? That's so you beat good. Kurt Harris, Daryl Stafford, John Sherman, and yours truly. How about that? And Ronnie Coleman, you beat. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody beat Ronnie Coleman. Back so then. you got you got that yeah, back in the day. <laughs> but that's that, back listen, in the day. But you yeah. can see, you know, just just scanning down here because you look at some names, even Joe Dawson, so, Jose so, Guzman. I get it, Jose. But so you never made it to the Olympia. You never made it to the Mr. Olympia competition. I went twice. Oh, what years were those? Were you 92, 94. 92, so you were in Helsinki, Finland. I was in Helsinki and I was uh, at Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta. Wow, I don't remember that. Not, uh, well, you, you were all, just, listen, you, you were you all about you at that point. Me, yeah. you, must have, you must have forgot about me because yeah. we went to Germany <laughs> after that. Um, that was you, where Ronnie Coleman made it there too. And the funny thing is, when after I won the Nationals and we were doing Flex Magazine workout, right. you and I went to dinner a couple of times. Uh-oh. Take me. Did I pay? <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, no way. Up. I told no him I bought dinner. I bought. Oh, come on. Now, this guy. Clearly What do you, what do you remember? Tell me about the path. What, what, what do you remember about those days? The dinner or, or just the back back in the day? Oh, you, if you remember the dinner, you wish, you got a better memory than I do. <laughs> what, what happened at the dinner? Oh, basically, we were just going back and forth about, you know, you were trying to feel me out because, uh, again, you didn't know me. Right. And I had always known you because you would even come to a couple of uh, seminars in New Jersey, which I had attended at the time. Uh huh. So I got to know you from that aspect saw you at the night of champions in new york and then the next thing you know i win it in 90 and then here we are you know we're hanging out yeah isn't that Which, crazy? you know to me back in the day that was cool yeah i mean, I felt the same thing you did but it was with like guys like mike christian rich gaspari right. i know that feeling that you're talking about of course bob met me as a teenager so he got that feeling very early on when i was kicking his butt in the teenage national championships <laughs> but tell me about some of your travels what was it, what was the beauty of uh, being a professional bodybuilding card-carrying member of the IFBB back in the day, uh, traveling with some of the world's best that you saw in the magazines, and you got a passport that you're getting stamps in. I mean, your family had to be tripping to think that you're flying out of the country to go show your body. What did they think of this? Everybody thought it was great. I mean, my father was particularly taken by it because uh, back in the day, you know, Growing up in Philly, I was like, hey, I ain't going, I don't feel like doing it. Uh, you know, you hear about Paris, you hear about Rome, it's like, yeah, that's all right, but yeah. not interested. <laughs> but, you know, once I turned pro, all of that changed, and I got a chance to see Europe pretty much just about every country, and not just in competition. I was in, uh, because I was a national champion, I got invited for guest posings, uh, Germany, France, Italy, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, I mean, literally all over the place, Japan, Korea, uh, Malaysia. Did your friends wow. even understand, like, hey, I'm, I'm leaving the country, I'm, I'm going to Hong Kong. I mean, your, your f sphere of friends, I'm sure they weren't flying out of the country every weekend. <laughs> no. no, I mean, and, and that was a mind blowing thing to them. It's like, yo, man, you're in it, you're big time. Yeah. You, you know, you're everywhere because literally, Every other weekend, you were on a jet and you were going someplace. Were and mm -hmm. to let everybody know that is the light. Yeah. I yeah, mean, because, you know, you've got promoters from all over the world flying you just about everywhere. And you're flying business class. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's big. It's big time. It's large. It, it's a great feeling. It's something that I wish 
everybody could experience. Yeah, I think it's a validation for the body at work and the sweat equity you put in the gym. Uh, the, nays- the naysayers that say you can't win. You don't have to win. Yeah. You're one of the best in the world. You, they recognize you as a world champion. And here you are with a passport with all these stamps and getting life experiences. Some people save their whole lives to experience. And that's a sidebar, Bob, that a lot of people don't actually get to experience. That doesn't come with a first place medal or a last place finish. This is the part of the business, right? And you're getting an education by sharing these experiences, these, sharing yeah. these experiences in all these other countries. Well, both of you guys you learn are- a lot. You develop a lot of skills, your people skills, uh, everything. You even learn, you know, back then it was, you know, different uh, currencies and whatnot. So you really had to be sharp. You had to be on your game. Mm-hmm. You're changing borders. You're all over the place, and and you really learn how to. Uh, improvise, adjust, and adapt. And you were traveling where people couldn't get a hold of you. Like when you left the country, they couldn't page you. They couldn't, right, they right. couldn't call you on a cell phone. You're taking yeah. a risk. You got on a plane and you hoped that that other guy was there to pick you up. Yeah, right. And then right. Uh, you're trying to figure out where the hell you're staying and communicate back in the States. And if you pick up that hotel phone, it's going to cost you $1,000 per minute. Yeah, right. <laughs> Had a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. Well, both of you guys were riding high in 1994 at the Olympia. Let me bring you back to memory lane here, guys. Yes. Dorian Yates. Number one. Sean Ray. Oh. Kevin Lavroni, Paul Dillette, Porter Cottrell, Chris Cormier in six. Nasser El Sambadi, Charles Claremont, Andres Munzer, Sonny Schmidt, LQ Gurley. Wow. 11th place. Very respectable finish. Was Ray McNeil in that one? Here's who LQ beat. Aaron Baker, Milo Sarshev, Thierry Pastel, a guy named Ronnie Coleman, again, in 15th. <laughs> wow. 15th. John Sherman, Alcom Albrecht, Roland Sherlock, Samir Banu back in there. Gunther Schler can't make in his appearance. Uh, for the, so, you know. Was it Ray McNeil in this show? 94? No, he was not in 94. No. That is a, the, that's an impressive list of people I, that you beat. Well, I bring this up for, for two good reasons. One, you're both obviously in the same Olympia. But two, just to emphasize even more, we always talk about the, the toughest era of, of competing and how, you know, how deep it was. That lineup. This is 94. That's bananas. I mean, LQ, you're in 11th place, which is, again, very respectable. But look at the guys he beat. Ronnie Coleman's in 15th, who would go on to win. This is the second time you beat him, by the way, just to, just for bra- <laughs> just to give you some bragging rights, LQ. All right? No, I mean, you were, you were legit. I mean, we saw you coming, and then it just seemed like you were gone. You were ghosted. Like, uh, it's hard to kind of, when you're fighting for the title, which I was in a good position in 94, I'm only looking ahead, and it was just like Dorian and Flex and Kevin I'm dealing with. And, of course, you're coming up from the back of the pack, and not looking back, you just kind of disappeared. I didn't see that happen. Um, mm-hmm. And like Bob said, like some people step all the way out the scene and you forget about them or they kind of hang around and, and meander to kind of watch their friends and see what's going on in the, in the group. But yeah, you kind of just, you disappeared. So when you walk- It was out, heartbreak, man. It, yeah. it, was, it was heartbreaking, devastating yeah. uh, at the time because again, like I said, I was on the ascent and I, sure. I felt that I was going to win the Night of Champions, which back then the Night of Champions was the big setup for the Olympia. Huge. Yes, it was. If you were a top placer or the winner at the uh, Night of Champions, you were slotted to do yeah. very well at the Olympia. Do you remember who and, won that year, LQ? Who ended up winning that year? Do you remember? I think Ronnie Coleman did, no? No, In, not that early. Night of well, 97, Ronnie won the, the one you were getting ready for before, when you got hurt. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, he was, that, was that the 97 Night of Champions? No. That was the 1997 Night of Champions that I would have been in, yeah. Okay, so Bob's going to do the research on that. But I'll do research. In the meantime, though, uh, Al Q, when you, uh, what gyms were you training at in Philly? Because Philly wasn't on the radar in terms of the bodybuilding capital of the world. Who was out there with you that you kind of looked up to or, or were feeding off of? It's basically the, the guys who I came up with in the neighborhood. I mean, the, my friends, Anton Mays, mm-hmm. uh, Al Faraz, you had Todd Howe. I mean, guys who you would never know and never meet. Todd Howe actually is an NPC judge. Yeah, Todd Howe actually is the state chairman of Delaware, isn't he? Is that yeah. the same guy? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah. So uh, I know hip hop was a big thing out, out in the Philly area, too. It was like that movement was going on. Uh, what else were you involved in besides bodybuilding? Were you just eat, sleeping and training back in the 90s there? That's basically what it was. Yeah. And, you know, I was training people as well. I had some um, clients who were uh, professionals, Mm -hmm. doctors and lawyers and people like that. So I would train people periodically. And then the rest of the time was just devoted to bodybuilding and the craft. So and you may remember Richard Brown. Richard Brown. Big Richard Brown. Yeah. 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 Dr. Brown. He was a trainer. He trained you? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he trained a lot of guys. I heard. So just, yeah. just to tell the people out there who are watching, uh, talk about fate and how it has funny ways of, of taking you different places. So this is the results of the '97 night of the champions out too that you were primed and ready to go. Uh, and for the record, I believe you had beaten everybody on this list. Chris Cormier won it. Okay. Uh, he, who you had okay. beaten previously. Milo Sharshev, Ernie Taylor, Mike Matarazzo, Pavel, Claude Grew, Don Long, Henderson Thorne, Gunther. Uh, there's a few other names. It's, it's a long list. There's probably 40 that names. That was a on. lineup that you would have fared very well in. Well, like I said, uh, if my, if my uh, research is, is on here, which of course is, I don't believe there's anybody there you ac actually hadn't previously beaten. So you talk about fate. I mean, yeah. uh, he could have easily, you know, maybe probably stepped in there. Like you said, if you were in your best condition, man, might have been I a whole felt, different career. I felt, yeah, that I would have definitely been a top five guy in the Olympia. No, I, I could see Definitely. that. Yeah. Had, had the injury not occurred, because at that point, you know, it wasn't, you know, this is right before the Super Size era kicked yeah, in. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was basically symmetry, proportion, balance, and, you know, working on the posing, because that's seemingly an art that's been lost. Yeah, this is when we had Jurassic Park in 97, 98. <laughs> that it was. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it just got crazy. Yeah. Speaking of Jurassic. 1999, 2000, it, everything just took off. And I, and I think that we sized ourselves out of the out of the business, out of the public psyche. Because prior to that, there was Flex Magazine Workout. I remember walking through the airport <laughs> after being on Flex Magazine Workout. And it, it aired at like 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, early. And the amount of people that recognized me came up, yo, man, I saw you on Good TV, stuff. yo. Yo, dude, no, man. You, you know, you, I can't say I'm not going to cuss on him. Did, did, did anybody mistake you for, for being Sean Ray, or uh, did they think you were just too tall for that? <laughs> they always they always compare Sean and I. Yeah, I know you guys used to get that all the time. Yeah, everybody knew who Sean Ray is and was, and it's just like, yo, man, you guys look just like I'm. Like, well, we not really, but <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, the pretty light eyes. Yeah, yeah, pretty. Light. <laughs> yeah, pretty light. But you know that that is, that was the point where bodybuilding was really starting to take off, and I think had it followed the symmetry and the, the balance. Uh, more balanced aesthetic physique, it would have tapped into the mainstream psyche and the mainstream consciousness. Well, but in all fairness now, you did have, I know you, you probably fell off a little bit, but like all bodybuilders, you're still checking who wins the Olympia and that type of thing. You did have Phil Heath who, who got in there between, you know, for seven Olympias in a row who, uh, you know. I met mean, Phil. I yeah, met Phil. Very Man. reminiscent of a guy who probably could have competed in the 90s and done very well uh, as he combined those elements. He's not a mass monster, also not a small guy, but do you follow any of that today, Al Q? Like, have you seen, like, the last two, three Olympias and, and, and kind of see where the sports go? I, I, I looked at the I, I look at the, uh, the videos and whatnot, and it, it's interesting to watch because they say these guys have, have – have, obviously taking our platform from the 90s and just expanding on it to the point where it's like to the you know nth degree it's like wow and there was it was a period where they you know uh, arnold had uh really started to uh clap back at the guys who were starting to get the bubble guts and whatnot <laughs> right and, right you know, i'm like this uh, you know at that point i'm like yo you guys are losing touch you lose track you're out of your you uh blown the whole thing out of proportion and what about shape symmetry balance Where's the aesthetics? Where's the beauty of it? Yeah. Which, the, again, the general public looked at that and said, you guys, I had people walk up to me in downtown Philadelphia and even New York. Mm -hmm. Guy walked up to me in New York and Buffalo Soldier. <laughs> hey, man, he said, beautiful, man, beautiful, beautiful. And people would literally just walk up and shake your hand and want to take pictures and hug you. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, now... I've heard people say this. It's like, yo, I don't want to look like these guys now. It's like, this is out of control. Yeah, well. And like, you guys look back in the 90s, I like that. And even <clears throat> back then, we thought we were over the top. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we were pushing the envelope. And, and of course, it got we further and further. At that point. So who do you like, uh, Al Q? Is there anybody out there that you like? Like when I was coming up, of course, I loved Bob Paris. I was nothing similar to him. I Bob just, Paris was great. Yeah. Bob was great. I looked at Bob. I looked at Robbie Robinson. Uh, I looked at Muhammad McElroy. Yeah, very good classical. Um, the guy, I looked at the aesthetic guys because that's who 
I related to. Mm -hmm. Now, when it came to the math monsters, I mean, I could always appreciate it, but I'll never look like that. I'll never be that. So, uh, you know, I was aware of them. Uh, you know, I kept tabs on them because my, my thing was when it came to competition, you either got to meet the standard or beat the standard. Yeah. Well, so if you have that mentality, you're never going to make it as far as competition goes. And in bodybuilding, the way it is now, these guys have become cartoonish. Mm -hmm. And it's to the point now where, it, again, the aesthetics have been lost. I mean, they're muscular, they're big, they're full, they're round, but it's not as, uh, and this is not to disrespect them because I don't, I don't want to poo poo on anybody's body of work because what they do is incredible. Mm -hmm. But it's it, the aesthetics is not the level or not the concentration anymore. It's it's size. Yeah, and you know, and I, I, I like to, you on a frame. I, to, to just put it in a box, uh, I mean, our tastes change as we age too. I mean, I'm not the same guy I was at 25. I don't like the same things I liked when I was 35. Uh, mm -hmm. At 55 years old, I see a physique. It's not the same type of physique that I fell in love with when I was 25 years old. So. Styles change and, and, and our interests change too. Uh, to, to put right. a ribbon on it, what's a day in the life look like really quick? Like, what are you doing with your spare time now? You're 57 years old, I believe? 59. 59 Dude, years old. It's coming up. What's your birthday? March 5th. And you'll no. be 60. Oh boy. No, oh, I will be 59. 59. Uh, what's a day <laughs> yeah. in the life look like? What are you, how are you spending your time out in Florida? I'm writing a show. It looks like you're, is that a screenplay? What is this? <laughs> no, it's a YouTube, it's a YouTube show. I even uh, mentioned it to uh, your producer. So I'm going to, I'm going to float it by him to see, you know, what kind of interest he can delve up to. Yeah, it we, got, we got people here in high places that can make things happen. Sure. You got the ideas, we can help, you know, implement it. You're Th that's, that's what I'm interested in because, uh, I mean, to give you, I'll just give you a, a gist. Yes. You, you remember, um, Wow, his name just left me that quick. Well, you're almost 60 See, years old. Yeah. Uh, the chef? Gordon Ramsay? Yeah. <laughs> no, not Ramsay. Talking about, no, chef, no, no. talking about Chef Rush? Oh, Chef Rush, the big guy? No, no. Yeah. The, um, the Swedish uh, chef from the Muppets. <laughs> you know the guy. Okay, what about the guy, the cook? What, what, yeah, okay, what, okay, basically the guy who's traveled all over the places on CNN. Oh, yeah, the show. guy that travels around. Yeah, with the, yeah, okay, what about that guy? Yeah, think of, Something along those lines, but a bodybuilder spin. Okay, so you're gonna go around and cook for bodybuilders? Nope. You're gonna show them how to cook. I can't. I can't really tell you what it is because that way I'm giving up. I'm giving up the idea. I see, okay. I see Chef game Bob game. coming soon. <laughs> nope. Hey, to do if with you don't cooking. know how to cook, you can start at my house. How about that? It has nothing to do with cooking, but it's it, it's it's how cooking and bodybuilding blend. Okay. And how what people do around the world. Uh, yeah, it sounds right. like a, well, you're making me hungry, bro. Listen, you keep writing. We'll keep uh, uh, cooking, up, the food's ready. cooking up some different ideas. <laughs> I'll cue. Uh, we got to run, but we appreciate you slopping by and filling us in on the uh, life and times of LQ Gurley. All right. Great from the past, Shout bro. out to Philly. Uh, great morning. to see you, John, as always. All right, brother. We'll be in touch. You got it. Back after okay. the break, everybody. All right, that was it for uh, Al Q. Gurley, our 1990 overall NPC national champion and world champion. Basically, where are they now? He, we haven't heard from him in quite some time. No, it's been. I haven't talked to Al Q. Probably 20 years, so it's great to see <laughs> yeah. him. He's doing. And good. he lives in Florida, by the way. Yeah, well, when he's uh, not too far away. But yeah. um, you know, you talk about what could have been, Sean. Yeah. I mean, here's a guy who was at the prime of his career. Mm -hmm. Slips at the at the forum or wherever you a basketball game to uh, Philadelphia, watching the game. Yeah. Boom. Both tendons go out in his knees, full reconstructive, and his career is done. Reminds me of uh, Dennis Newman training with him back in 94. Yeah. 94, yeah. interesting year. Uh, he wins the USA Championships, gets diagnosed with leukemia. Yeah. And, that, and that was the end of that. I mean, he's but, healthy now, but it was tragic. You know, I, I tell you, it's just, you know, it's it's got to be devastating at that point to be, to be in, in LQ, again, for, for those who want to, you know, delve uh, with us into bodybuilding history. He was a very good bodybuilder. I mean, yeah. he had beaten that list of names when he went down. 
Yeah, he was you. there. He was in the mix. The night of the champions is is won and placed by all everybody that he has already beaten. That was so the he, number two show in the world. He could have won that and gone on to the Olympia. Maybe he is a top three, four guy in the Olympia. Now remember, the Arnold Classic started in 1989. That's right. So I mean, he was. He was in some very good company coming up in the 90s. We always talk about the 90s being the golden era, the toughest era, the Hall of Fame era. The names of people he beat, quietly, very subtly, yeah. uh, he could have been something. I tell you, something. you know, you just never know where your career goes, but like we always tell these young guys, when you have opportunity, don't pass it up. Yeah. Don't pass up Olympias when you're, you know, like he Qualified. said, I mean, he, he took the next year off. Yeah, uh, could have been his year. It, it could have been. Um, you know, listen, you got to strike while the iron's hot, boys, you know? Yeah, you, I mean, you spend your whole life waiting for the opportunity to be a professional, to be qualified for the Olympia. And then you want to take a year off to get your mind right, <laughs> put on some more size, improve. Strike while the iron's hot, that window is very short. And again, Dexter Jackson, 20 Olympias, it would have been, what, 22 if you didn't miss the That's one right. year. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a refreshing story, though, to hear that Al Q was able to overcome the odds, overcome the obstacles. He wasn't caught up in his head. He was very aware that, you know what, I'm turning the corner, I'm going to get my life straight, and I'm going to do other things. Some people trying to live in both worlds, it doesn't work. Well, appreciate you reaching out to Al Q. It's, Sean, it's great to see some of these guys from the past, yes. you know, 90s, early 2000s, you know, and it's one of those things where it always comes up. What did ever happen to that guy? Well, you know? now we well now we know. Yeah, now we know. Thank God for Monday Night Muscle, and that's going to do it for us today. Make sure you join us next week for another episode of Monday Night Muscle for Bob Chick. I'm Sean Ray.